welcome to Tumbleweed Ranch, and welcome, if you will, three different side-by-sides, three vehicles that we're trying to determine which one is best for you. We have a serious play model, we have a serious work model, and more importantly, we have the go-between. That's right, yeah, so in this video, we're gonna find out how much capability do you need and what's the right machine for you. So we're gonna start out with the utility model of the side-by-side -side world with this, the Kawasaki Mule Pro FXT Ranch Edition. And this is our long-term mule, and the reason that it is so dirty is because this thing gets used day in and day out out here at Tumbleweed Ranch. I've seen this vehicle winch out more stuck vehicles in actually your obstacle <laughs> than anything else. And I'm impressed with the fact that it's reliable, it's hardworking, and it is kind of fun to drive. So it kind of has a little bit of everything, but really it's built for work. That's right, and you can tell that at the rear of the vehicle. So this vehicle has a dump bed, and it actually has a really cool sliding system, which we'll show you here in a second, where you can slide the seat forward and the bulkhead forward to expand the bed. But this machine is tailored for life at the ranch. So we use it to haul rocks, we use it to haul wood, um, and it's got a lot of payload, even though it's a pretty small unit, over 1,600 pounds of payload capacity. So this thing is ready to work. It also has a hitch um, and it's got a pretty high tow rating as well. Let me get the exact number so I don't mess it up. 2,000 pounds of towing capacity, which is pretty good because it has just 47 horsepower out of an 812 cc three cylinder engine. Yeah, it is by far the least in terms of horsepower, but it's the most in terms of utility. I also think it's really funny that this thing can hold more in its bed technically than the Ram TRX we had. Yeah, it's got higher payload than that. Now, of course, it does have four wheel drive and it does have some suspension, um, which we'll test out here in a second. But I wanna show this really cool feature which the other two don't have. So this is a convertible system and it can convert from a six seater to a three seater. And let's show you how we do that. So this is a really ingenious system that Kawasaki uses in the way that this whole system kind of folds and pivots. So the first thing we're gonna do is undo a couple of latches and then the seat bottom is gonna fold forward like this, but that is just the Start of the coolness, you now have these rails which you pop open. And then Nathan, if you want to grab that side, yep. the whole bulkhead shifts forward just like that. Nice. And then these rails come down, I believe, and latches the whole system in place. Look at that. Absolutely wild. And then it goes even further than that because this top will pivot forward. Check this out. Want to lift up on that? Yep. So you can see the bed will actually dump. This huge bed, this will lift out of place so you can get a full dump as well. This machine is designed for hard work at the ranch, hard work at the farm, but let's see how it does off-road. So we're gonna get it out over on Onyx Off-Road's Andre's Pits and see how it performs. All right, Nathan, welcome to the Kawasaki Mule. What do you think of the comfort of this machine? Um, not as good as the other ones. The seat's too flat. <laughs> it's a very flat seat, that's true. Um, but you can hold three people across though. Yeah, you can hold a total of six in this vehicle, which is very, very useful. There's actually enough room for someone skinny like a second Tommy right here. Yeah, maybe. Um, let's go ahead and start her up and uh, we'll hear what the engine sounds like. Now this is a three cylinder, it's the only three cylinder. It sounds fine. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna go through Onyx Off-Road's Andre's pit course and um, Kind of see how the comfort is of this machine, see how the capability is. We'll test out a few of the uh, features out in the dirt here. So first up, we're gonna go through our trenches course and see how the traction aids are. So I'm gonna put the machine into two wheel drive, which we are in right now. And we'll see uh, if we uh, don't flip over. That'd be ideal. That'd be really nice not to. <laughs> Whoa. This thing definitely has the least amount of articulation, horsepower and ground clearance. Oh, for sure. You know, by far. So you're gonna take it slow, see if you can get it off kilter. Actually though, not bad. Not a bad performance, even in two-wheel drive. All right. Uh, it's unhappy. So you can see, let's go ahead and flick it into four-wheel drive. Just push the button. Uh-huh. And you I can see. some tire. Yep, that did it. No difficulty, I'm gonna take it nice and slow. We'll try to get it off kilter. Yeah, very nice. So at the top of the hill, you can see open diffs are giving us issues, but we do have a locker. Yeah, so let's hit it. Push the locker, we'll see how it engages. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, better. Very good performance. Now this does have the smallest um, tires of the three. This is running a 26 inch tall tire. 
and we'll see if that runs into some clearance issues as we go through rocks. And we're gonna go ahead and stick the trans into low here. This does have a CVT, of course. And we're gonna take this, uh, take these rocks, see how the ground clearance is. Oh yeah, absolutely no difficulty. Yeah, as long as the locker's in, I think we won't have any problem. Yep, we got locker on. Um, we also have underbody protection, so if we did run into stuff, it wouldn't be a, wouldn't be a bad thing. Stick it in reverse, and we'll go down the hard side, see how that is. That uh, hurt something. A little bit of a touch there on the underside. And certainly you get a lot of kind of head bob and movement, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, a lot of transitional movement. And we'll feel that, I think, especially as we go up logs. All right, this is gonna be our test of ride quality over logs. Yeah. We'll see how it is. It's not too bad. Not horrible. Yeah, it's not the most comfortable thing in the world, but we were able to make it through. Um, and then lastly, I think we should check out the approach and departure angle. Yes. And we'll do that by going through lava lane here. Now, 47 horsepower doesn't sound like a lot on paper, and it really isn't a lot um, in practice, but um, it's enough for kind of a work-oriented machine. It does the job. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think we'll see that here. So let's see if we can clear. I'll take uh, the most aggressive line. So far, so good. Yeah, definitely some articulation going on. And then we'll take it purposely slow. I'm gonna stop here, and then I'm gonna plant it, and we'll see if we can get out of this situation. Are you ready? Yep. And full throttle. Oh, oh yeah. So, overall, the Kawasaki Mule, um, very capable little machine. Um, it will do trails, but you're not gonna be doing trails at a very high speed, because it doesn't really have the width of the suspension travel, um, but it still is one of the most capable off-road machines you can buy if you're willing to take it a little bit slow. But as we step into some of the Polaris units, we'll really start to see how speed comes into play. This is the Polaris General XP 1000. Now, it's actually 999 cc's, but we'll say 1000. Puts out 100 horsepower. This has 13.5 inches of ground clearance and adjustable suspension. But most importantly, and this is the part I absolutely love, look how short it is. This act, you can get a four door, right? This is the two door. And that is really cool for playing around, but it has this. This is an actual bed for dumping. And the cool part about this is that it can hold up to 1,100 pounds and it can tow up to 2,000 pounds. And it has this up here, which personally speaking, I'd probably remove that, but I kind of get why some people put it here because you can actually mount components to this as well. Altogether, it really is the cross section between work and play. Yeah, so in the Polaris lineup, you've got the Ranger, which is their strict work model. You've got the Razor, which is their play model. And then General's supposed to kind of straddle the middle. And, and as Nathan said, this is a pretty cool idea. So it's 64 inches wide, just like the Kawasaki we just looked at. It's got a much higher end suspension setup than the Kawasaki. It also has much larger tires, so it is tailored for trail use. But um, Polaris also wants you to be able, as Nathan said, to use this vehicle as a proper work model. So if you want to move kind of that, that um, yep. thing there, Nathan, you can see there's this handle, which will pivot on this little lever, and then you can actually dump the bed. So you've got a little bit of practicality. Now this is a much smaller setup compared to the Kawasaki. Oh yeah, by far. It doesn't hold nearly as much in the payload, as you said, is some 500 pounds less. I'd say with the tailgate down, this is about three and a half feet, maybe three feet and change. Yeah, you're not gonna of... be, you're not gonna be carrying your full size hay bales in this, but for around the ranch, you could still carry, um, you know, a couple logs, a couple of, a couple of bits of feet. A yak head, a whole <laughs> head from a yak would fit in here, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But then this will allow you to have a little bit more fun out on the trail as well. So I think we should go hit it. Um, Nathan, you drive this one and we'll try it through Andre's fit. Hell yeah. So Nathan, these seats are pretty, pretty different than the Kawasaki seats. You know, that's one of the first things that stands out is the ability to hold you while you're off-roading. The problem with the Kawasaki is that you're sliding around and that's what makes it not a true fun off-road vehicle, right? This at least has a seat that will hold you. And I'm also noticing this is a lot more kind of tech features. Oh yeah. Got this big screen. I think we even have a radio, right? Yeah, and it sounds really good. So check this out. Oh, look at that. Yep, yep. You got all that little graphic there. Then you have this digital display with 
two hard displays, as I like to call them, and I like that. I like that setup quite a bit. Let's see if we can use it in gloves. Oh, you can. Sweet. Yep. And let's check out the nav screen. Yeah, that works too. Beauty. Plus additional yeah, that's gauges. That's really cool. That's really cool. Okay. So very simple. This has two-wheel drive, two-wheel drive rear lock, and then it has four-wheel drive. Very simple setups. Nice. Easy peasy. Let's do it. So you want to go to the, uh, just like before? Yeah, we're going to go down and then we're going to go through trenches first. Oh, this is a louder machine too. Oh yeah. It's got a lot more kind of exhaust sound to it. It does. But what you're going to notice is that it's maneuverability. Ooh, look at that, dude. Yeah, it's not too bad. Beautiful. Ready? Yeah. Here we go. Now this has 30 inch tall tires, right? It oh. does. Uh, there it goes. Wait, a little bit more. Articulation is helping, but yeah, uh, Nathan's wait. just powering through it. See, that's the thing, power. <laughs> Bigger tires, better clearance, better articulation lets me go through there in two-wheel drive without having to lock the rear diff. I also like the steering wheel on this unit. It's got kind of a cool race style steering yeah, wheel. The grip is good. And I will say immediately right off the bat, and we'll see this going up rocks, the ride quality feels excellent. Really, really good ride quality. Yep. All right. Should I lock the rear, you think? Sure, why not? Give it a click. All right, one click over. Nice. All right, we're going to go up the right side. Yeah, we're going to go up the right side and then down the left side. Easy enough. See how the ride is. Yeah, this has the Walker Evans suspension too, so it's, um, it's, a, it's a nicer setup. Oh, look at that. Doesn't like that. I should probably go to four-wheel drive. I don't yeah. want to stress it too much. There Might be go. time, yep. That's what I would normally do looking at these rocks, right? Here, we can also go in a low. Try it now. Should right. Give us some more torque. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. look at that. <laughs> it doesn't care. That makes it happy. Beautiful. Yeah, no problem. Awesome. Um, yeah, having that um, more ground clearance too is probably going to aid us on the way down. Oh yeah. So we did touch the bottom on the um, on the mule, but I think on this we should probably make it out. Absolutely no difficulty. One thing that all these machines share in common is the shifter is a little bit hard to engage. Yeah, you have to pound it. It's pretty vague. Yeah, you sure do. Nice, dude. All right, let's see how we do going down rocks. Now this is the same 64-inch width as the Kawasaki. Do you feel it to be tippy at all? No, nah, not at all. By comparison, it's far more stable, but also you're in a seat that makes you feel a lot more comfortable about doing this, right? Right. So. Yeah, you're really held in place a lot yeah, better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a great observation. All right. Nice. Yeah, no problem there. All right, we're going to go ahead and run this thing up logs next. Logs it is. Turning radius is still not great on this. Yeah. If I was on sand, I would kick it and make the rear end pull out a bit, but otherwise it's it's okay, even though it has the shorter wheelbase. All right, let's see how she does. All right, nice and easy. Oh, Not yeah. too bad. Really good ride quality. Yeah, compared to the uh, mule, yeah. Well, that poor mule just doesn't have the articulation. It doesn't have these, you know, really high-end shocks. Well, the other thing too about the mule is that with the smaller tires, you kind of fall into the um, into the holes versus going on top of them. That's right. This this goes over. These are 30-inch tires on this vehicle, which gives you just enough to go straddle the, lo the logs. All right. So we're going to circle around, and then we're going to go do um, lava lane. We'll see how the clearance is. Another cool thing is that this is the Troy Lee design unit, which has a really cool graphics package. It's a limited edition, but I just love the way it looks. Uh, so we're going to go through here and then stop on the steepest part. Gotcha. And then we'll punch it and see what the power is like getting out of here. Nice. Oh, yeah, plenty of clearance. Way more than you need. So right about perfect here. Yep. Yeah, and then just give it all the beans. All right, hold on. Whoa! Whoa, dude! Did a little bit of a wheelie. <laughs> But it, but it figured it out. Yeah, a lot more uh, torque in this too. Oh, a lot torque. more torque. Yeah. This is 100 horsepower, right? Uh, yeah, about 100 horsepower. So it's double the Kawasaki. Essentially, it's double the Kawasaki and it's about 999 cc's. So it's a larger powertrain altogether. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the next. Beautiful. And 
lastly, we come to the big behemoth in the room, the Polaris Razor Pro 4R Ultimate. Nathan, what are we looking at? We're looking at a turbocharged four-cylinder vehicle that puts out but over 200 horsepower, right? 225 horsepower. Damn! Five times the horsepower as the Kawasaki we looked at. Now this is a unit designed for one thing, and that is to go as fast as humanly possible over any terrain known to man. And it does so with a lot of technology. What are these shocks, Nathan? Well, these are fully adjustable. Uh, if you look, they're Fox uh, live valve, and it allows for, is it 29 inches of suspension travel? Yeah, the Dynamics DV suspension in this thing is nuts. It's also completely adjustable on the fly. You've got like the compression button on the steering wheel for when you jump it. Um, I mean, this thing is built for one thing and one thing only really, which is just to scare you. Uh, so, well, which, which is also fun. I mean, yeah, know, it is fun. Of course it's fun. That's the whole point. It's, there's a little tiny bit of utility. You could put maybe a helmet or two back here. <laughs> yeah. But, so this has, I think 900 pounds of um, total payload and you'll notice the towing capacity is zero. There's no hitch. Yeah, they really don't want you to tow with this. No, this is a vehicle not designed at all to be useful on a ranch. This is a vehicle designed to go, um, you know, blasting through sand dunes. That's exactly it. But it's really important that we ascertain how good it is off-road by taking it onto our course. Now, Nathan, immediately, this puppy's harder to get into. It is. I mean, obviously, you're in a much uh, higher performing vehicle yep. that's built to go really, really fast. Yep. But it also means that you're stuck with safety equipment especially when you're a big fat guy like me, you have to really pull everything out to adjust it. But once you get in, you're really snug and you're held in tight. Yeah, and check this out. I mean, look at all the, so we have four wheel drive controls over here. We've got um, headlight controls, but over here we even have drive modes. So um, you, can, you can go between different drive modes. So this thing is, this thing is ready to race basically. Whoa. <laughs> I'm angry. All right, so check this out. So we got a steering, um, steering wheel with steering wheel buttons to control not only audio but different um, suspension modes as well. Yeah, this thing is pretty uh, pretty out there. So we're gonna start in two wheel drive, just like uh, we did in the other one. We also have um, several different four wheel drive modes here. You can see that little display there. But I think in this machine we're not gonna need anything more than two wheel drive. It almost sounds cammed, you know. It sounds as if Alex got his hands on it and did some crazy stuff. <laughs> I'm just saying. No, but I think he, this is its big, right here is its big issue. Turning around. Oh, look at that. <laughs> it's like a Toyota Tacoma with an extra long bed. Yeah, that is, that. It's that, not a good turning That is radius. something else, isn't it? So you wouldn't want this at the ranch because you wouldn't be able to follow a cow that would out corner you, essentially. Follow a cow, you said? Yes. I mean, think about it. This thing, I mean, oh no, wait, let me back up, Bessie, before I try to put a rope around your neck. Or whatever they do, branches. The amount of things that this unit would go up. There we go. It also has a super long wheelbase. Yeah, which will probably help us actually on some of this stuff. Well, this will allow us to get the wheels where they need to go. I mean, look at that. Two wheel drive, not a single slip, and I'm taking it extra slow. Look at the look at the clearance of the travel. That is that is ridiculous. Yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> You're not gonna make this turn because this thing just has the worst turning radius ever. This is like so you could have fun on this course in the uh, in the mule. You could bounce around a little bit. Yeah. This is just gonna make the course seem so boring having to go back and forth and back and forth. It's you know, for driver's head. You know what I mean? Like this is just so overkill for anything you could throw at it. I mean, the rocks, of course. Like, gotta watch that rear tire, make sure we're not gonna catch anything. The sound is good too. I'm angry. It sounds angry. I am angry vehicle. <laughs> That's we're right. We're still not in four-wheel drive, right? Uh, no, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we're in four-wheel drive. But you don't need it for anything. I mean, it's got so much grip. It's got so much clearance. Right. We'll try going down rocks, but there's really no point to it. Backup camera is pretty good. 
But this might be the one spot where it has a little bit of an issue because of its super long wheelbase. That's true, it does have a super long wheelbase. And it's super wide, so this is a much wider machine With than the other two. 64 inches, right? That's right, Nathan, yeah. Or the 72. It's crazy. Well, I mean, check out the difference here over logs. I mean, we kind of had to crawl it in the mule. We took it a little bit quicker in the uh, in the general. Yeah. Man, are we even going to fit up here? <laughs> Barely. <laughs> I actually feel bad for the logs. <laughs> I do too, Nathan. That's true. Yeah, this thing is just amazing, but it's also over $45,000. See, that's the thing that gets me every single time about all of these. The pricing is just painful, but, you know, at the end of the day, you're buying some serious off-road high tech. That's right. No point even, even doing lava lane with this amount of yeah. over 200 horsepower in a side-by-side. -side. I mean, I can stop, make okay. sure we're four-wheel drive, yep. But check this out. This is why you buy this unit. Are you ready? Let's yeah. give it a launch. Let's see how it launches. Go in a different mode. There, yeah. What in the hell? <laughs> there are many sports cars that we have driven that don't launch like that. That is Nathan. Nathan. What is this insane? I think we choked out poor Alex in that dust. I think I think we did. Here, give it one more. <laughs> wow. Uh, as our favorite commenter often says, what a machine! <laughs> I know you like saying that too. What a machine! But it's it's so good, but it's also I'll tell you when we close this out. Yeah, let's but I really close it think up. about it. Yeah. All right, Nathan, I got the magic sheet with the prices here. So that Kawasaki Mule coming in at $20,599. How much is the General XP1000 Troy Lee Designs Edition? $27,488. And the Polaris Razor Pro 4 Ultimate, $45,000. Damn. So, which one are you taking home? I mean, this makes absolutely the most sense. I wish it was the four-door, because then I could bring my family with, but I don't love my family that much. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I mean, it's it's like, oh, hey, my favorite kid for today, you can go with me. Oh, then I am my spouse. Never mind, I want the four-door, but that. Yeah. yeah. No, I completely agree. So, the mule is a very useful machine, but you wouldn't have a ton of fun out on the trails with it, because it's just, it's not a trail machine. It's a tool, and it's a good tool. I keep saying tool, It's but it is. It really is a good tool, right? It's not really built for fun. The seats don't quite work for fun. The whole setup's just not really built for fun. This is kind of fun. And then this thing is stupid fun. I think the RZR is essentially a toy and nothing else. Yeah, I mean, the Razor is an amazing piece of technology, but it's also $45,000 and it just doesn't have a lot of use cases in a property like this. So Nathan nailed it. General, I think is gonna be the winner of this comparison. Let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. As always, I've been Tommy and Nathan for... For? Go to alttfl.com to get all of this stuff, but we're here for TFL Off-Road.